the FNL Network Talk Show. Hi guys and welcome to the FNL Talk Show. I am Kat Jollies and this very beautiful and very talented board of hosts are Eugenia, Stefania and Jeff. Now, I wanted to talk celebrity and weddings and relationships and fashion, but today we have had some, some really severe, I'm going to say severe, breaking news in America, and it concerns abortion. And it's going to affect half of the women in America, and people are very emotional, so I wanted to talk about that first. Basically, what's happened is the Supreme Court have overturned the 1973 Roe v. Wade bill. And what does this mean? This basically means that women have lost their constitutional right for abortion. So it means that states can now decide that abortion is illegal. And already we have 13 states that have trigger laws in place that should this bill be overturned, that abortion will become illegal. So the likes of Texas, Louisiana, within 30 days, women cannot have abortions. Now that, to me, that is horrific. We've turned back the clock to the 70s. And it's, it's just horrible. I mean, me and myself, I have been to Planned Parenthood. I did get pregnant and I did have an abortion. Um, I had an abortion at seven weeks, so it was very, very early. Um, it was a chemical abortion. You take two pills and you miscarry. And had I not had that, I would have been a single mum. I would have been miserable because I wasn't ready to be a mum. And it would have changed my life and changed a child's life in a way that is just horrific because I wouldn't have wanted the child. I wouldn't have been a good mum. I was not ready to be a mum. I've never wanted kids. Um, the father was became a drug addict and an alcoholic. Now, I am forever grateful that I had that chance to do what was right for me and to do what was right for the child that could have been. And at the time, it was seven weeks. Um, and it's not going to plan parenthood. It's not something you take lightly. You go you have a scan and basically it's having the scan itself uh, it takes a lot of courage because you basically have what looks like a vibrator stuck inside you while they kind of look around and they scan for pregnancy and see how far gone you are. And it takes a lot of courage to do that. And I am forever grateful that I, living in California, had the, the option to do that and I just, I'm horrified by what's happened today, really, really horrified. And there's so many women out there that are gonna struggle. There's gonna be, in my opinion, suicides, depression, children given up for adoption. There's gonna be maybe children abandoned. It's just, it's endless. I mean, how do you deal with the, the mental issue of what these women are gonna go through? and go to illegal doctors and end up with bad surgery, bad abortions, which are gonna harm them. Now, I am I am quite emotional about it. And I'm very lucky, I'm from the UK and we have the right to abortion there. And it's something I think women should be able to choose. Um, and it's like in the USA, you know, people have guns, the shootings, but yet they're choosing to discriminate against women. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm horrified, absolutely horrified. I know President Biden, he has said that the Supreme Court has made a terrible decision today. And it's just, it shakes me to the core. It really does shake me to the core. And I'm gonna put it out there to you guys. I want to know your thoughts and opinions on what's happened today. Because I know a lot of America is very emotional right now. So, who wants to go first? I'll go. <laughs> go on then, Jeff. Uh, I think it's unfair to the woman. Um, I'm just using as an example. Um, just say, per se, if the woman get raped and um, they say that she can't abort the baby and she has to deal with that situation of the rape by um, carrying the baby, I think it's just unfair. 
um, they should have their rights if they want to keep or abort the baby. So I just feel like it's just, you know, a lot of times things happen. Young young people have sex and wind up getting uh, the young lady pregnant, just using scenario, and she's too young to be able to even, you know, carry a baby. So I just think it's unfair. I think they should give them the right to choose if they want to, or if they don't want to uh, keep the baby or abort the baby. Uh, it's like almost suicidal to me is another way of suicidal. If they're not happy caring for nine months and they're not even, you know, say they don't even want to love the baby and the baby's inside of them and it's aching. It's just a lot emotional behind them making that decision. It's, it, it was in place for a reason to me. And I think they took that out of place and allowed them not to have the right to uh, be able to choose. So, yeah, that's my opinion on it. Yeah. Um... Stefania, do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that you don't even have to like or agree with the idea of the abortion. You just have to realize and be empathetic enough to know that there's people who go through this every day. And just because the abortion is not legal anymore, it doesn't mean that it's going to stop happening. I came from a country, unlike you, uh, Kat, that is not legal, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. And a lot of women die every day because they are still going to do an abortion by herself, with the help of a friend. You're just gonna make it happen. I am fortunate enough to never, uh, I haven't been in that situation, but I am empathetic enough to, to know that, that that's a right. That's your right, it's your body autonomy. It doesn't matter the reason, it's just you don't feel ready or you're not ready to be a mom or you're, you don't want to be a mom. I mean, that's your right too. If you want to have kids or if you don't want to have kids, that's your decision. And I think taking, taking it away, like saying it's not a constitutional right, it just means like, okay, maybe we need to make the decision for you. Maybe you have to. You have to have a baby that you don't want to. And of course, that baby is going to become in this society. Maybe, maybe it's not going to even have a, a good life, you know? So I think it's really... It's really important and you have to think about it. You have to think that women go through this every single day. So yeah, I don't I don't agree at all. And I came from a country where it's not legal and women fight every day to do it legal. And so you can do it in a safe way because as I said before, that it's not legal doesn't mean that it's not gonna keep happening. And if it, it keep happens, it's gonna be just in a unsafe way and more women is gonna die and that costs more to the to the city at the end of the day. So yeah, that's how I feel. I completely agree with you guys. I think as a society, it's a really sad day for us because we jumped like so many generations where, you know, we progressed and I'm actually working with Washington. I have a special event at my house for Women Forward International and Equal Means Equal in July, where people coming and I hope, you know, we can do something. I encourage everybody to to act upon it you know because I think it's not only talk like we have to put back an action I feel like we definitely live in George or Orwell society where there is no rights as human like no rights for free speech and no rights for you know everything is censored and now coming up with you know that it, it, it is definitely a shocker as a mom of two you know I had my kids very young and I love them dearly but even you know I didn't understand what was happening and I had an abortion like you catch um and I had to do it just because you know my husband wants to retire and like it's personal he can't afford it even though we live you know in this in Los Angeles and I just can't even imagine how women who are coming from poor you know places can live with that and as you said like rape and things like that it just it, it feels really shocking so I hope that everyone who is watching will act upon it somehow yeah it's it's just an incredibly emotional day for so many people and what gets me is if you were carrying a child that said had a heart defect or had a condition that was gonna see it struggle for its whole life and you're made to bring it into the world. I mean, that's cruelty on the child, you know what I mean? It's setting it up for a, a life of being abused by society, 
um, struggling. You know, I mean, there's so many defects that can happen in, you know, during pregnancy and stuff. And for the woman not to be able to abort a human being that is going to struggle for life, that's going to, you know, have a total mental disability, say be a cabbage, um, it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And I really, I'm, I'm lost for words. I really am lost for words. I hope, I hope in time that this changes again because it's, it's barbaric what the Supreme Court's done today, absolutely barbaric. Um, and I think a lot of America is mourning today, I really do. They're kind of, with all these women that are gonna have no choices. And I think there's a lot of sadness around today. So yeah, I wanna thank you guys for addressing that because it, it's not easy to talk about. And uh, Eugene, thank you for also talking about your abortions. I know that's not easy to talk about in public, but I have so much respect for you for mentioning it um, because people do judge, they do judge and they never know your circumstance. So thank you very much to everyone for addressing this topic. I did think with it being breaking news today that we should address it. I was to, um, I was about to, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was about to thank you both. I, I mean, I'm sure that's not easy to talk about it. And that's just so inspiring for everyone and myself. I'm just, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And we should open our eyes. There's a lot of people out there that needs to someone to speak up for them. So thank you guys. No, I mean, I had a family member, a close family member that didn't agree with what I was going to do, um, but they supported me. They did support me in my decision. Um, and it, it was really hard, really, really hard. And, you know, I don't regret it. It was right for me, um, but it doesn't mean that there's not sadness that it happened, you know? So, and it's a decision you don't take lightly. You never take it lightly. So my heart is with so many women today um, across America, because there's 13 states right now where abortion is gonna be illegal in 30 days. And there's five or six more that are gonna follow um, within weeks after that. So it's, it's just crazy. And it, I just can't believe it. I'm actually lost for words and we know that I like to talk. So for me to just be in shock is, wow, that's all I can say. It's just heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. So thanks again, guys. I appreciate you addressing this um, really difficult topic to talk about. Anyway, moving on to lighter things. And we're going to talk about weddings and celebrities and fashion and dresses. And there's been three amazing celebrity weddings so far this year. Um, and I love celebrity, I love weddings, I love love, uh, I love the fashion, and I like the fact that we have three very diverse weddings this year. So we have Brooklyn Beckham and Nicola Peltz. They had a weekend long affair um, in Palm Beach in Florida at Nicola's parents, a hundred and three million dollar estate. Um, I'm going to say Nicola's parents make the Beckhams look like paupers. So this wedding was incredible. It cost three million. They had two different ceremonies. They had a Jewish one. They had a proper traditional, I'm going to say English one, um, but I probably mean like churchy type one, but they had it, you know. Um, anyway, it was a star-studded event. Uh, Eva Longora was there. The Williams sisters were there, Gordon Ramsay was there. Um, now Nicola's dress, it was fairy tale. It was designed by Valentino. It was fitted to her body. It was quite simple, but it had a train that royalty would be proud of. I mean, that train should have been in a cathedral. It really should, she looked stunning. Her hair and makeup were inspired by Claudia Schiffer. Um, she, she looked like, a princess, absolute princess. So that's the first wedding. Wedding number two, we have Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. What can I say about this one? This was an episode of the Kardashians on crack cocaine. It really, really was. Um, it was filmed for the reality TV and 
it was a gothic affair. Dolce and Gabbana um, sponsored it. They did all the outfits for the Kardashians. They sponsored boats to the villa. Um, but what can I say? Just horrific. It was a total, it was like seeing the Adams family crossed with Beetlejuice. Um, Courtney Kardashian, she looked horrific. She really, really did. It was insane. And just the fashions were awful. And it wasn't about romance. It was about a show for reality TV. You know what I mean? And I just couldn't believe what Dolce & Gabbana came up with because it was certainly talked about, but the fashions were talked about in the wrong way. I'm going to say Kim Kardashian looked good and Chloe also looked good. So that was wedding number two. Wedding number three, we had Britney Spears and Sam Ashgari. Now that was very intimate. It happened at Britney's house. Um, it was star-studded because it had Madonna, it had Donatella, uh, Versace there, it had Donna Blank, um, but we'll get back to that. Oh, Drew Barrymore, it had Paris Hilton, and the dress was designed by Donatella. It had a choke around her neck, and then it was kind of a V here. It was quite simple, um, and that was just a really intimate, beautiful affair. Um, all about love and all about just celebrating their relationship. It wasn't a big affair. Didn't have lots of paparazzi there. Um, I'm gonna say, sorry, Brittany, the dress did not much for her. Um, the choker kind of cut off her neck so she looked like she had shoulders and then a head. And it just made her look a bit short and stumpy and bigger than she was. But that wedding itself was about love. It was amazing. It was so beautiful that it happened. Um, so I love that. I love the fact that at the after party that she had the diamond thong she wore. I love that diamond thong. I really do. I think she had four outfits for her, um, her reception. So we have three very different weddings and I love love and I love romance and I love the fashions. And um, I want to put it out there that you guys can talk about your thoughts on the fashions, the weddings, the themes for the weddings. Um, because we all have different opinions. And like you've already discovered, I hated the Kardashian one. I just thought it was it, kind of a bit vile, to be honest. Um, and I loved Nicola and Brooklyn's. Um, I'm going to say Victoria Beckham. She looked um, amazing, absolutely amazing. It was incredible. Her dress was Studio 54-like. Um, it was a silver kind of slip dress. And it was meant to be um, the moonlight shining on the ocean. And I'm gonna say, I think she looked better than the bride. I really do think she looked better than the bride. Um, and I know that's a bit kind of taboo to say that, but for me, she stole the show. So putting it out there to you guys, what was your favorite celebrity wedding this year and why? What did you think of the fashions? Who's going first? Jeff. <laughs> Go for the man, you know? <laughs> Oh, uh, well, like you said, I saw the Kardashians. I did not like it. I think it went from uh, fairy tale to very gothic. It was kind of weird. She went really dark. She had a black dress on with the mother. I think it was Mother Teresa on the front of it. They had a design on the front of it, which was kind of weird to me. But uh, that's their style. He has a lot of tattoos. So, uh, you know, he, to me personally, um, they die, they design according to their personality. To me, that's what I saw. So um, I, I don't, you know, I don't really judge fashion. I think fashion is what it is. People have their own style. And to me, I think they represented their style. I wouldn't do it because I like, like you said, the fairy tale wedding, beautiful, elegant flowers, all that. But I, you know, if that's them, that's them. But, uh, you know, I didn't really research a lot. I've been so busy, y'all, honestly. So, but uh, I did research that and I did not like it. It was just very dark to me. And uh, it's supposed to be a time of uh, joy, laughter, and kind of light, carefree. And uh, I didn't see a lot of that, you know. Maybe it was her experience on the first one and she just wanted something that wasn't traditional. So that's my opinion. I'm sorry. Yeah. She did actually wear white for the wedding, but it was like a little mini dress. And then she yeah. had 
but it wasn't, it just, it didn't, I don't think it did anything for her. And again, it was, it was tacky, really tacky. So. Was a lot of dress. I like the design that they did on the back of it, the embroidered work on the lace part. That was really pretty. But, oh yeah, because they had the, um, kind of like they did the tattoo of uh, Travis's head. That was, that was a really nice gesture. That really was. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Other than that, I did. I didn't like the black, the uh, the one that she was, you know, out and she had all the black and the around the um, headpiece. It was the blue, and, and it was just it was really dark to me. But I really liked. There was another celebrity who got married, Ivy Getty, and she had this dress. I don't know if you guys seen, but it's all like made out of mirrors, and I thought it was so fantastical and just so wow. different. Yeah, like all tiny mirrors like suit together and it was like an amazing classic gown, but it just, you know, it was just like next level of creativity. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I think wedding is an interesting subject, like it definitely depends on what it represents to you, you know, like history of weddings is all about like, okay, I'm getting married for the land and things like that. And I think we live in a different world. I actually canceled my wedding like a few times, <laughs> never didn't want to get married. Um, and I think, I think it depends on the personality. It's like, it's interesting to see each celebrity and what they represent. I think it definitely like representing them, them well and what they are, like the Kardashians, they put out this tacky thing, but that's what they are. That's what reality wants. And, you know, I, I feel like they fulfilled that obligation with a dress. I can't imagine anything else. Um, I do love, of course, Beckham. She's got amazing style and I agree with mom. Um, you know, she she's stunning and she has good lines and it's just so easy to look at and it's very classy. I think things that are more simple sometimes are more complicated, but the beauty is in simplicity. So I agree with you on that. Um, and Brittany, you know, God bless her. She just, what she went through in her life. I think no matter what you wear, I'm just with Brittany because you know, living in the public eye, it is hard. And especially if you go through whatever she went through and a lot of artists go through that, especially in the music industry, um, just my heart breaks. And if you find love, God bless you, wear nothing, you know, just celebrate you. And uh, that's where I'm at. But I, I like, I'm excited to see what Megan Fox is going to wear with Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly too. Uh, they're an interesting couple who I think um, when they get married, I'm just curious if they're going to wear all, all pink or, <laughs> or something very creative. That's where That's I'm gonna make yeah. I agree. I agree. I think it's also, and I don't know if I'm, what I'm going to say is right, but you can tell that it's Brooklyn and Nicola first marriage and first serious relationship and they want all the romantic stuff and, you know, embrace that love. And then you can tell that Courtney already been through this long-term relationship and being just in the public eye all the time and she just said whatever I'm gonna do it my way I don't care and then Brittany I I didn't knew she got married until yesterday I don't know why I don't know where my head was or my phone <laughs> I don't know why I didn't knew but yeah exactly like like Eugenia say God bless her everything she does is just like okay if you want love I oh my god thank god you find love and do it the way you want to do it so so yeah for me marriage and love it's it's something really personal too so i agree it's it's just the way you you wanted to show it or you wanted to feel it at that time and i just love it i love love <laughs> yeah i absolutely love um britney and sam together i think they're just an amazing couple and sam supports yeah. her through so much and it kind of i was like celebrating when they got married because i just i think they're so beautiful together and it's a real trusting, honest, loving relationship. And I just think it's fantastic. And it's like, go Brittany! <laughs> so happy for her, I really am. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys, do you have a favorite celebrity couple? Because I am obsessed with Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Um, I think they are like the ultimate celebrity couple. I mean, they're just so in love. Three kids later, they are so in love. And at the Met Gala, when 
Blake was halfway up the stairs and she transformed her dress. Ryan's face said it all. I mean, it's just, that relationship is wow, absolutely. So incredible, especially as they're both in the public eye and they both work so hard and it's just, it's just such a special relationship. I also think Justin Bieber and Hayley Bieber, they have a phenomenal relationship. I mean, they support each other through thick and thin and they have been through a bumpy ride. Um, you know, Justin had his problems this year. Hayley had her stroke and then poor Justin's got his face uh, issue at the moment. And I think they're also an incredible, incredible couple. So does anybody have a favorite celebrity couple? Jeff, I'm picking on you today, Jeff. I really am picking on you. <laughs> well, honestly, I think Jay-Z and um, Beyonce because they keep their, their relationship so private. I didn't even know their daughter was uh, at the age she is now. Like last time I saw her, she was a baby and her and Jay-Z were out at a um, game and she's turned out to be a very beautiful uh, young lady. And I think that they keep their kids private and they don't keep them in the inner part of what's going on. So I just love their relationship. They're always very poised when they go out. They're not in a whole bunch of scandal. And to me, it's about family. And uh, I think they represent that very well. Yeah. So nice choice. That's very nice choice. Yeah. I haven't even thought of them. But yeah, yeah. I, I agree. They're wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. yeah, for me too, one of my favorites is Thor, Chris Hemsworth, and El Zapataki. She's from Spain, and he's from Australia, so they're kind of, it, you can think that they're really different, but they keep everything so private. They have three kids that I don't know their faces. I don't know what they do, but I love them because they are, they're together for a long time now, and they're just so, such a good-looking couple. She's gorgeous and he's gorgeous too. Like, why? <laughs> How is that possible? But I love them. <laughs> I love them too. It's, I'm not, I'm not jealous. I'm just a bit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they seem very down to earth and they seem, yeah. they just seem so grounded. And I gotta say, I didn't even know they had three kids. I knew they had kids, but not three. I mean, that's just yeah. how they keep yeah. themselves to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. So, three kids? Yeah. And she's teaching them Spanish. So I love how she's like, even though she's in Hollywood and all this Hollywood stuff, like she's, okay, I'm from Spain. You're going to speak Spanish. <laughs> I love that. I would say, her roots and that's wonderful. yeah, I would, I, I love Justin and Haley. just, um, you know, kind of a little bit seeing them around. Uh, Haley's with um, my agent, Luis Maros at MG and Justin, he comes to comedy shows a lot and they're just so humble and you know it is really hard to live in a in a world where you always like projected something projected onto you and you know of course you go through things with emotions and you know your struggles and I just love how open they are and how they show that marriage is really hard it's a lot of work you know um, being married for 14 years now actually 13 um, I can say it's very tough because especially if you're in a public eye or work in entertainment business, it's a, a lot of times comes up with like power struggles and, you know, with a business and like, what is the role of the woman? If she has kids, is she the one sitting home? And, you know, now it's a different time, like who's cleaning the dishes and things like that. And I think there's just a lot of work to be done, no matter who you are. And I think especially for celebrities, it's so much harder because you just can collapse anytime because people will put all their opinions on you. Um, but I think amazing thing to see is like, you know, as, as anybody, you can see authenticity right away. Like you said, you can see in Ryan and Blake, they're, you know, how they support each other. Um, and I just, you know, I wish every couple will be as supportive of each other and like go through that and, as you say, as I said already, God bless them, you know, because being in, in the public eye always brings a lot of, a lot of things. Like I was in Cannes with my husband and he runs Miramax and, you know, he likes to be behind the scenes. So it's like, how do you go on the red carpet and like, how long do you stay, you know? And it's, it's like all these kind of silly issues, but also 
like how how are you like you were photographed every every second actually I had a, a great couple there who I love uh it's a French actor and I forgot his name but he's married to this um African-American model and I they were walking the carpet right before me and just their gestures you know and how they took care of like red carpets can be so chaotic and people push each other and it's like whose spotlight is that now like blah 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 you know and I, I think you can really see people who deeply support each other no matter what like even in this crazy business and crazy world and um especially when you have kids and I think it is it is a decision of each couple like to do to keep it private or not you know I think it is very wise to keep your kids out because especially now with Instagram and things like that like I actually decided not to 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 put my kids I started blog model mom but then they don't want to be in any social media because it affects them a lot. So I think it's it's definitely harder now, like in these days and age, just to because everybody's a celebrity now, like everybody has TikToks and Instagram and it's a different world. That's what I think. Okay. So talking of that everybody's a celebrity, I did want to touch on that because like you said, celebrity has become an obsession. I mean. I spend my, my nights scrolling through Apple News to read celebrity stories. I love that stuff. I like gobble it up. I, I'm obsessed. Um, and I think it's addictive. And I think that it's addictive for the celebrity. I think it's uh, addictive for Joe Public. I also think the fact that, like you said, we can use TikTok, we can use Instagram, we can make ourselves famous. We've kind of got to the point in life where celebrity is an addiction and is it a good addiction is it a bad addiction is it a good addiction for the celebrities is it a good addiction for us and I want to ask you what are your thoughts on that um Eugenia somehow I had an urge to speak to you know I was speaking to my therapist and she's like do you know that maybe like 60 percent of people uh don't know who Beatles are and I was like, wow, this is like incredible, you know? So I think it's interesting what celebrity like is now and what it was at the time. I mean, to be a musician in like the sixties, you have to play a guitar. Now you can press a button, you know? And to be an actor, you have to, you know, be Bill Murray and nobody knows who they are. Like, it's, it's just so crazy to me, you know? And now to be a star you have to make videos on tiktok which for me it's mind-boggling like if you research it it just i think makes you think less have less skills and it doesn't take that much time like the it's like gratitude right away mm -hmm. and then it's all about celebrity and it's not actually about your talent which i think is very damaging for us as a society because what is your real value? You know, like, why are you famous? Like, that's the biggest question is why for me always. Um, I think it's super unhealthy for people like my kids, you know, and I see like my husband would cast somebody like Addison Ray because she has so many TikTok followers. And I was so upset. I was like, she's not a comedian. She doesn't do comedy. Like, but you know, whatever. Um, that's, that's the nature of the business now. And you know, I, I think everything in life takes some time. Like I, I'm actually for quality over quantity. And I remember in fashion, there was a big change. First, there were like all these designers, art couture, you know, like I remember working with Yves Saint Laurent and all these designers. And then finally it became corporations, right? So when it was corporations, they started changing designers. It became all about the label, the quality kind of went out and then the companies like forever 21 they just basically zero they copied everybody and there's no quality at all and the clothes became so recycled so fast you know there's a, this gratification where you go and you just buy 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 shop 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 so I understand economic point of view but the only thing that happened is corporations became richer so I think you know in this aspect as well as the talent goes of course you have to understand America is a corporation, you know, and um, they make a lot of money on people like us who want a new celebrity every day and they want to just recycle really fast. But where's the quality? You know, for me, it's all about the quality. And I think there's timeless quality 
in people and it, it it's it's just sad um so you know i hope that it will come back because everything is a cycle and all i can say for kids like please know why you're doing what you're doing and not just want to be famous and that's where a lot of suicides come in just because you know people put their value on that and on likes and it's it's not real mm -hmm. it's not real and everybody can be a celebrity by the way like you just have to understand you know being in hollywood like i didn't understand the system but you get a publicist and the publicist gets your magazine cover and then you you're you know semi-famous like there's all these kind of things that you can do it's, it can be manufactured and i think people don't understand and they start to you know compare yourself to like celebrities or whatever but you know it, there's a it's like a job of a publicist to get you a magazine cover or k magazine or whatever the scandal some actors I know they became famous by hiring these paparazzi. Like it's not like paparazzi is chasing you. You actually pay a photographer. He shows up, takes the pictures. It's all stage. I swear to God, like all the time. You can be famous. There's books written on that, and it's it just doesn't compare to the quality of work. And if you bring something to the society, and you leave, you know something good in this society for the future generations instead of just being a narcissist and being famous and okay making money or how much can you make you know there's this psychologist who wrote a book bending reality and she started working with a lot of athletes and billionaires because they got to a certain level and celebrities and they just were the most miserable people ever and that's i think that's the end game you have to think of like why are you doing things and what can you leave behind so sorry for renting but i was very passionate <laughs> about it i'm i am totally with you on it i think celebrity it has become slightly toxic i mean i love it and i read all the stories but like you said you do have a paparazzi you do pick up the phone so these celebrities that are like you know i want to stay out the public eye and then it's like um kim kardashian wore this down the street today Day, Kim Kardashian leaving the gym or whatever. Sorry, Kim, I don't mean to pick on you. But you know, these celebrities, we see them at different venues every single day because they've quite obviously picked up the phone. You know, you can stay under the radar. Um, so I think for celebrities themselves, I think they get addicted to being a celebrity. And I think they need it more and more and more. And um, just looking at the Kardashians, because they've very much been a talking focus today, they were going to finish uh, keeping up with Kardashians. And I think they then decided that they'll be worthless without it. So then they had the Hulu show, um, Kardashian. And they are, just as a family, they are addicted. And I look at their relationships and most of their relationships haven't been good, you know, with men and stuff like that. And I think they probably prioritize celebrity over other things in their life, you know? So it is, it's getting to a, celebrity is getting to a crisis point. I mean, you can stay under the radar. Um, and I hate Instagram. I hate Instagram. I like looking at other people's Instagrams, but me, myself, I, I hate it. I noticed so, that you don't have a lot of posts. <laughs> I have like three. I took them all down at one point because I, when I had alopecia, um, I lost all my confidence and kind of wanted to hide away from the world. And Instagram was very, very destructive for me. For about the first year of alopecia, I didn't go on Instagram at all. I basically took everything down, didn't want to know because I was seeing like all my model friends having a great time, you know, um, on the beach, at a shoot, doing this, doing that. And I just felt so horrific about myself. And I, I felt worthless. I absolutely felt worthless because of Instagram. And people had treated me differently and just, yeah. And on that note with the alopecia, I don't blame Will Smith one bit. <laughs> Um, for the, the Oscars slap, because I've, I've been there without a piece and it's horrible. Yeah, I, I agree with the, with the celebrity um, topic. I think, you know, it's became so popular thinking that everyone can be a celebrity. You just have to post a video, 
went viral and there you go you're a celebrity just keep doing that and you're a youtuber you can get a lot of money and a lot of attention but at what cost because the, now i want to change a bit the subject to what happened when you when people is obsessed with celebrities you know like people kill celebrities because they became obsessed with them and i i'm never going to be able to understand that you became obsessed with a person that you don't know that you're probably never going to be friends with and and you just became like as obsessed as wanting to kill them what happened with Jill Lennon as you said that no one knows the Beatles that's amazing for me you know you know some TikTokers but you don't know the Beatles that's it doesn't make any sense to me and so yeah I think at, at what cost I think for right now for young people it's just about money or maybe not even money, maybe just being popular, popular at the time and feeling that superiority that popularity gave to you. So, yeah, I don't think, I don't know if it's worth it. What do you guys think? You think it's worth it just being popular for a minute and it's then being even... alone? <laughs> because celebrities <laughs> are, okay, you're popular for a minute. You have a couple of friends maybe, but you have real friends, like for real. You do have someone that will give your life for yours. I don't think so. So I don't know. I mean, the money probably, it is worth it. Yeah. But after that, I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, my God. It's, just, it's, a, it's a deep subject. Uh, I'm glad we're talking about this because, you know, I don't like Instagram. I do it because of advertising of my brand. I think it's just overrated because sometimes even when they're picking the people with the uh, most followers, you can actually pay for followers and it's just a lot into it so I, I think about everything that Eugene just said that people that are really talented and put their time and effort in and passion into what they're doing sometimes get kind of brushed to the side they don't really know the story behind how they went from this place to get to the place that they're at now and in the midst of that happening, a lot of times there's a lot of jealousy and envy. True people that actually are gifted and talented that wind up being great. It's stuff that's behind the scene that people don't know that they go through that they don't want to experience. And they experience it. They experience it on a level that they don't want to be in the midst of paparazzi and all the crazy. They just want to have time with the people that really truly love them and be in a quiet place versus being around people that are superficial and only want to be attached to them because of the name or because of the status. So to me, I don't think, I don't think people really understand what it is to be someone that's really an influence because to me, that's what a celebrity is. It's someone that's influencing and are you influencing for the good or are you influencing for the bad? It's, it's gotta be a divine purpose behind why you're doing it. You just don't wanna be a celebrity for yourself because then guess what? You're just being selfish. There's no purpose behind it. What is the purpose behind why you're doing what you're doing? So I just think about all those things and you know, I see some things and I try not to um, be on Instagram too much. I try to stay in my quiet place to keep me grounded because it can become very competitive. You see things and you see people and you compete on those levels. And I said in my heart to heart that I would never be a person that want to be competing with somebody else because their gift is their gift. We all have gifts. And I don't want to be in a place where that's happening. I think to me, that's what Instagram is. It's just a competitive uh, outlet where people are competing with you and they're competing with you for the wrong reasons. And uh I don't know. I just, that celebrity, if they really understood the reason behind it, it's not what people, people that really are in that, in, in that scene and really done well for themselves and the work they did behind, but put behind it, they wouldn't really want to be in, in their shoes because it, it's not, it's not an easy task to get to that place. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. my opinion on it. Yeah. And on that note for me, it's like your value is measured by how many followers you have, how many likes you get. Yes. That's that's not healthy. Uh, and also, if you're, as you said, a celebrity for me was someone that I look up to, you know, like I say, oh my gosh, she is an amazing actress. I want to do that one, once or whatever. Uh, I want to help people. I want to do this or do that. But right now it's like, okay, celebrities are just popular and they have a lot of money. And they don't do pretty good things. They show a lot of 
cleavage or something, but it, they don't do pretty good things. Like they, they just, they're just popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But Jeff, you started moving me towards the final topic. Um, and I want to talk about the good sides of having celebrities and also the destructive sides. So by this, I mean the positives um, of celebrities. For example, they have promoted it's okay to not be okay. You know, it, they've been open about mental health issues. And now you can come out and say, I have depression, I have anxiety. I've struggled with eating disorders. You know, it's okay to talk about that because celebrities have come out and been, hey, I've had these issues. So that's a positive. You know, we also, it's okay to be, you know, on the, the gay like spectrum sort of thing because celebrities have made it okay, you know? And I think that's absolutely wonderful. But, you know, negative is the fact that there's many celebrities that, for example, have plastic surgery and they're not open and honest about it. And then um, people feel inadequate. And, you know, the filters on Instagram and the, the trimming and all that, um, it can be very destructive on mental health. So I'm gonna say there's so many positives of having a celebrity, but there's also so many negatives, you know, like Leonardo DiCaprio, I think he's amazing because of everything he does for the environment. And he, uses his celebrity, he uses his wealth, he uses it for a good cause. And celebrities like that are absolutely wonderful. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put it out there to you. What do you think about, you know, the positives and negatives of having celebrities? Um, Stefania. Um, I totally agree. I think that there's everything, there's always a good and a bad of everything. And I think the really, really good thing about celebrities is like that, they, they get real. They say, we have depression, we have anxiety because, and that, as I said before, I think it's because they're by themselves. I, most of the time they're value because of their money or their popularity. So that's why they start experiencing depression, anxiety, maybe drug problems or alcohol problems. We've, we've seen a lot of celebrities going through that. And I think the common factor is that they don't have real people in their life. So that they get to be that open for me, it's it's admirable, and and it's and it's worth to say, okay, there you go, that's your purpose, that's how you have to use your popularity to help other people, you know, to to help people relate to your situation and say, okay, I can talk to my parents, I can talk to my friends, just as the, the celebrity did. So yeah, I agree. I, I think that's a really really good, um, a really good thing about celebrities and their popularity. Cool. Thank you. Jeff. Yeah. Oh, how do I say it? Well, I want to say this. Can I say this? Yeah, can say what you like. There's somebody up here that I think is my celebrity. I don't really say much, but I watch them and I love Eugenia because she always have a cause. <laughs> and she does, she talks about the human trafficking and she does the community. To me, I love that. You know, I, I, I've watched people on the IG do stuff like that because I'm an influencer and I struggle with issues and I was bullied and I was rejected. And I don't think people that are, you know, put on a platform that, um, that they have the money or the, the, the prestige to be able to talk about those things didn't. And now they're talking about it. And it does make the person see that person as a human being versus this supernatural being that, that don't have no issues, don't have any flaws. So when they express those things, it's, it's important to us because then we're looking like, dang, you know, they just like me. They, they have an issue. I can relate to that. So yeah, the positive on that is when they become influenced to make a difference. And then the downside is when they don't tell the truth about, you can look at them and you look back on pictures years ago where their face looks totally different from where they're looking now. And they're just like, I never had this done. I never had that done. But you looking like a totally different person. Then no, people are not going to accept you as genuine or real because you're not being real with them. So yeah, I, it, it's a up and you know it's a positive and a negative with that. But I had to say that Eugene, I'm sorry. I had to give you credit where credit's due because I look at her and she don't even realize it. I look at her page and some of the things that she do, it's amazing. She's really giving back, 
And I think that's very, you know, credit. People don't give people credit when credit is due. And I just wanted to give her her credit that you, I may not be up there all the time and doing this and, oh, Eugene, but I watch some of the things that she do and it empowers me and empowers me to want to do even greater in my purpose with my fashion and how I want to be an influence and make a difference. So You're so sweet. Oh my God, back at you. You know, I think I always think about it. Like, no matter who you are, like a president or whoever you are, you are born naked, you die naked, and you are born alone and you die alone, you know? In between, it's what you make it. And I think, as you as you say, we're all famous now because we're all on these platforms. Like, yeah. I don't see a difference, you know? And it's not the studio that creates a star, let's just say, there's a system, right? It's a system. And um, I think it's important to understand that. Um, I think it's important to understand that with that comes responsibility, no matter if you have a voice, no matter where you are, you're responsible for other people who don't have a voice. And I love, for me, Keanu, who is a neighbor, actually, <laughs> I wasn't stalking him, but he's amazing example of that because the person is so humble, you know, he goes up and down through his career and he still rides the, you know, the, the train in New York and, you know, can be bothered by like being different than anybody else and is kind to everybody. And, you know, Keanu with puppies is like one of the most popular videos just because it's so adorable because that's an essence of kindness about him. He is my biggest inspiration in some ways. Um, and, you know, I think celebrities are people like Gandhi and Princess Diana, you know, they're definite inspiration and they bring some real authenticity um, and they change lives and these are the real celebrities and I think we all have that responsibility no matter who we are and thank God maybe for some reason we have a voice you know there is some good things about that and also you know I wouldn't judge people who have plastic surgery for the reason that you have to understand that the system makes us fit against each other and I was just looking for example what like Nicole Kidman or you know what's her name um Bridget Johns actress, what's her name? Uh, yeah, yeah. So what she went through in the public eye and people just always like trash you. But you know, as a woman, like I hear it all the time. Like you go to, and I'm sure you too, like, or anybody, you know, you're always like said no every day and you're like, oh, she's not, she's not hot enough. Or she's like too hot. Like, you know, you can never win. It's like, I actually partnered now with Playboy out of all things because they want to rebrand it for, content for different women and I got so slammed I'm like what are you doing like pornography now no you know I own my body I do whatever I want and it's it's classical you know I only work with photographers who who do something and I'll give proceeds to you know to people who who are in human trafficking and it's not going to be the message it's not going to be about that it's about broader thing of sensuality and not you know selling sex so I think I think it's important to understand that you know there's a system and it's old-fashioned system that's behind it i was watching a film about rita moreno and uh, what she went through you know the studio system and it's just it's it's sad you know it's sad not to have that power yet but i think we in the positive way i think if you're conscious about it um you can make a change so you know but i don't judge people who like have I, I have Botox, you know, sometimes. And like, am I proud about it? No, because it's vain and I spend extra money on stupid things. But am I, am I like, am feeding into the system? Yes. And, you know, I'm trying to like, to look at it. I love French women or French actors because they are just so unapologetic and they're so beautiful. Just coming back from Cannes, you can see a total difference. Like they're not plastic and, you know, they're, don't all have extensions and they're just so okay with that so you know that's kind of a goal where I would love to be but being in Hollywood and always being judged on your looks it's hard it, it can have a mental effect for sure yeah I mean I've had Botox I've had filler um I've done plastic surgery and I'm going to say I own it I'm proud of it um and I'm going to say every time you go for a surgery it doesn't necessarily turn out great you know I've had corrective surgery um I had two and a half boob jobs and a removal in the end. And yeah, I'm vain. I've been there. I've done that. Um, but I think it's important to own up to it and say, 
say what you've had done, you know. Um, I think that's great. I also, Eugene, I think it's fantastic you're doing Playboy. I love that, really, really love that. Because it's, Playboy, it's, it's not pornography at all. It's owning your body, it's owning a woman's beauty, you know, whether you're thin, whether you're curvaceous, whether you're on the larger side, you know, it's about owning your body, saying, I am proud of who I am. This is me. And I love that. They want to be branded and they give 100% to you as a creator. So you can choose the photographers. It's all about suggestion and the story. They actually don't allow anybody from like OnlyFans. So they want, and it's only you in the picture. You can't be with another person. So they want to make clear, you know, it's about, and as a creator, you can be, you can do whatever you want. So they give you 100%. It's going to be like an app. And I, th I think it's important, no matter who you are, just to, like, I don't understand for me this American system. And yeah, like, you know, the way maybe half created it, it was not good because you were selling, you know, I, I watched the documentary and I was terrified and, you know, appalled by it in so many ways. But I think it's a different time. Like we can, you know, we can own our imperfections as well. And like a few things that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, you know. I totally agree. I really, really agree. And I, I like the fact that Playboy is moving forward and rebranding. I love that. I was going to say the American edition was always tame compared with a lot of the European ones. Um, but I love the fact they're moving forward. They're moving forward with the times. And I like the fact that you get to be a creator. And I'm going to say, I'm so proud of you. So, so, so proud of you. Because that's, it's amazing. You're putting yourself out there. You're saying to women, this, you know, it's okay to love who you are, to accept your body. And that's absolutely brilliant. So, yeah. Back at you, back um, at you. <laughs> on that note, guys, I think where the time is up, I want to thank you all for being so open and honest. Thank you again for talking about today's breaking news. I know that was hard and we all kind of were emotional about it. Um, so I'm going to leave it for here. I'm going to say thank you to everybody for watching. Um, this is the FNL Network talk show, and we'll see you next time.